Welcome to the first day of activities of the third edition of Campus Party Europe and to the launching of the fireware activities that will take place during this intense week. Welcome Vice President and European Commissioner Nelly Kroos. Um, so um, to start with it, what is your contribution to the future of the internet? The internet is a magical place where just about everything is possible. What is your vision for the open internet? What is still missing in your online life or in the fabric of the internet? What can you make possible tomorrow that cannot be done today? Fireware is working on bridging together the ideas and the technology to power the next phase of the internet. We are glad to present to the Campus Eros the Fireware project as an important part of the European program, Future Internet PPP. We are also coming with a big announcement, the launch of FileLab, a live instance of Fireware available to developers for free experimentation with the technology and connected to the European Campus Eros platform. The best way to introduce to you is watch this short video about it. communication, information delivery, social networks, mobile applications, media contents, and e-commerce. It is a great achievement for humankind. However, its sustainability is tied so far to limited business revenues, mainly digital and physical assets trading, e-commerce, leisure, media contents, and advertising, user profiling, online adverts. New businesses and growth should emerge. Otherwise, the so-called internet economy bubble will certainly become true and therefore collapse. Sectors like energy, agriculture, logistics of things and people, environmental care, media contents, and urban development and safety are suitable to exploit totally new frameworks of internet services. Such a synergic combination will lead to the creation of new opportunities, revenues and jobs on both sides, the ICT sector and each one of those industries. To enable this path, the European Commission and leading companies in Europe have implemented the Future Internet Public-Private Partnership, PHI-PPP. Fireware is building the core platform, a kind of operating system of the future internet, by focusing on the technology. Work is focused on technology alternative selection, alignment and influence in standards adopted by the industry, and the complexity of scalability and performance. On the contrary, use case projects focus today on requirements of actual customers within vertical sectors. Later on, they will work out high solutions based on the Fireware platform. With all that in mind, what's really new in this platform? that will disrupt the current landscape for the sake of vertical sectors. One of the main challenges of Fireware as a project, besides delivering an architecture and real-life implementation of a software architecture, is to enable an open community of developers to move all outcomes forward. Fireware enablers are classified in wide technology chapters. Now I am honored to introduce Vice President and European Commissioner of the Digital Agenda, Nelly Cross. Good morning, everybody. There is a lot of roaring in Europe at the moment, a lot of movement, and parties are taking immense important decisions. Yesterday, we got the news that one of the big players, and not only a European player, is getting a lot of money out of a cell. Today, another European player is indeed selling, and um, the, the other ones are buying. 
So why am I just starting with that remark? Because there is never ever a fixed moment in Europe. Europe is on the move, so to say, and that gives you opportunities. And that is just a stimulant for you. Don't let chances go. And we are talking about the campus party that is an extremely important market, so to say, to find each other, to network, but also to check and to be stimulated. You have what it takes, the talent to use new technology to the full, the attitude prepared to take risks. That's you. And in a continent that's on the move and where so much is changing every day, yesterday, today, and I'm absolutely certain it's going on. You do have the desire to make a difference, and we will back you. We badly need you. The generation that is not risk avoiding, the generation that has his dream, and we want you to give the floor. I want you to give the resources you need to do that. And today, we are presenting some new tools, new building blocks, so to say, that you can use for the innovations of the future, the future of Europe. The internet has already fundamentally changed so much of our lives. We are all aware of that. A trillion euro marketplace used by billions, transforming every sector from transport to healthcare and so on and so forth. But as it becomes ever more essential, people also take it more and more for granted. They imagine that this is it, that we have reached the limit of its possibilities. This has long been a common attitude and it's wrong. Even just a hundred years ago, many people thought that everything worthwhile had already been invented. What could possibly top the light bulb, they said. And today, likewise, many seem to think that the internet will or should basically stay just like it is. And they assume that the current market structure dominated by large companies from across the Atlantic will also stay the same. Well, perhaps that's a natural reaction, but I don't see it like that. I think there is an opportunity for great innovation and an opportunity for Europe. And given that you are here today, I think that we have that in common because Make no mistake, research and innovation will keep powering change. New technologies will keep arriving, no doubt about that. Companies, business models, market leaders will keep changing too. So that is your opportunity. Tomorrow's internet landscape could look very different, and I'm certain that it will. New smart systems, available on the go, new social media replacing the old, cloud computing that is scalable, that is flexible everywhere, enormous data sets used to benefit science, to benefit healthcare, our economy, and our everyday lives, and a more secure and a more private internet. Well, maybe. Europe can do better, what we have recently seen from the US. But today, let me highlight just one aspect of the future internet, the internet of things. According to some, by 2040, that network could connect 50 to 100 trillion different objects. Everyone, virtually everything, there are huge innovative applications on offer with exponential growth. The global market in machine to machine is now already worth 
34 billion euros. And it could easily rise 30% per year. With trillions in global revenues by 2020, and it doesn't work in isolation, it supports either and other domains from cloud computing, smart cities, healthcare, intelligent transport. Just to say it in short, there are opportunities on offer and not just for big established companies. And I'd like to ensure those chances available for everyone. So, if you've got an ID, and a good ID, you can put it out there and enjoy the benefits. Fiverr is one way we are leveling that playing field, a project to make innovative technologies available for all. Technologies that you can use and create with. And because we have those building blocks on offer, you can take them, combine them, and add functionally that works for one domain or other and create something new that works, giving you access to a great innovation resource. And I know that access to these platforms matters. Over the last five years, typical US and Asian ICT companies, sales went up by almost 50% while sales by the European competitors stayed the same or even decreased. We need to change that, including through the platforms that enable and support new business models, from mobile devices to app stores, software and IP networks. These are the ingredients that help American companies build a network and snowball to success. And it is really time we have more of them over in Europe too. Just talk about smart cities. They are a great example. Smart cities create platforms and use them, making open data and applications available to citizens, to developers, to innovators, to come up with yet more ideas or a more secure and private cloud. Made in Europe, a European secured cloud, so to say. But platforms don't build themselves. And this is where initiatives like the FileLab come in, led by industry, and that is a major investment in generic technology. Focusing not on specific applications, but on the building blocks essential to creating them. And that is a great way to achieve them. And as of today, FileLab is open and accessible to everybody. Available to all to create platforms, to create applications, or whatever you want. And guess what? The technology is free of charge and state of the art. Think about security. Think about privacy by design. Social connected TV, augmented reality, instant mobility, or even smart farming. You, you can be the first inventing the killer applications for new areas and deploy across the whole of Europe more than the 500 million people. The largest market in the world beyond Five where building blocks are already being used and validated as we speak. There are five large scale trials in healthcare, transport and logistics, media and content, manufacturing and energy. And now it's over to you. We are moving into the next phase, so to say. The EU is putting hundred millions on the table. Yes, rightly so, 100 millions on the table. Why? To help small businesses, to help the web entrepreneurs, campuseros, to use and deploy this technology. So now it's up to you how to spend the 100 millions. You are best placed, not just to innovate, 
but to turn that innovation into real products, real services, and real jobs. Let's stop with being modest in Europe. We're being set. No reason for that. We can make it. We really can. Once we have found consortia to act as intermediaries, calls will be open to all. And that means you. You shall have the chance to submit your ideas and your opportunities and find new partners to work with new cities or new sectors. We are expecting that around 1,000 startups will benefit from grants to develop apps and other digital services around Fiverr. And I think this will play a part, not just in boosting innovation, but in shaping the whole underlying fabric of the European web community. So, like I say, now it's over to you. Tell your friends, you know the problems we face in our cities and in our societies. You have the tools and, more important, you have the talents to do something about it. And now we are giving you those essential extra ingredients for innovation. So my advice would be, run with it. The only limit is your imagination. You can build the successful applications of the future. So a dream comes through. It's up to you, and I count on you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Please let me now call to the stage Carlos Domingo. Carlos Domingo is the Director of Product Development and Innovation and Board Member of Telefonica Digital, and he will now uh, speak on behalf of the Fireware Consortium. Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for attending this uh, presentation about the, the future of Internet project and the Fireware. Um, I was going to have a, a speech prepared, but I, you know, this morning something happened in Europe that I think is pretty relevant to, to mention it in this forum. You probably saw in the news that Microsoft is, is acquiring Nokia. So a lot of people in Twitter were uh, posting saying, well, this is the last you know, great technology company in Europe that is disappearing, et cetera. So I was telling Commissioner Crows that actually my reading is very different uh, because what Nokia has done is actually got rid of uh, one fourth of Nokia, which is the device division, which is where they were losing money. And they are keeping the intellectual property, the labs, the research, the technology, uh, the maps, uh, the network equipment, etc., which is what was making Nokia for, uh, money for Nokia. And what they're doing is, is looking at the future rather than looking at the past. They have probably understood, like I think we're understanding in this project, that Europe for the last uh, 10, 20 years, unfortunately, we've missed uh, you know, this wave of revolution that the internet and the web and the, the mobile devices has brought among, among us. And it's time to stop looking at the past and start looking at the future and start looking at what are the next opportunities and not what are the past opportunities. And to me, this is what exactly what Nokia has done today. Look at what is the future, you know, recapitalize the company through a, a sort of, uh, you know, the device division and licensing their patents, and then, you know, start looking at the future. And this is what this presentation is about. This is what this project is about. And this is why it's called the future of internet, because it's about looking at the future and how could Europe, you know, regain the leadership it had in the past uh, in, the, in the new revolution that the internet is bringing among us. And there's been a number of things already happening. The web, uh, the information superhighway, as was called at the beginning, uh, then uh, all the social networking, then all the smartphone revolution. But it's time to look at what's coming next. And what's coming next, next is going to be about connecting things, about connecting cities, about connecting cars, about you know, creating this sort of like uh, operating system for the future of the internet. And this is what this project does. The Fireware platform is about putting all the building blocks that developers and entrepreneurs need to build on the future of internet. And, and the Fiverr project has provided already all the you know, technology pieces, uh, the cloud computing platform based on OpenStack, uh, some open APIs for, for Internet of Things and machine-to-machine, uh, -machine, uh, a big data platform, platform et cetera, et cetera. 
And what we're launching here at Campus Party, which is the most exciting thing, is the, the file labs, the future of internet labs. This is an opportunity for entrepreneurs and developers to start developing new applications and new services on top of this platform. You're going to have hackathons and you're going to have uh, a different uh, training programs where you will learn how to build your applications for this platform. And there's two good things uh, that will come out of this for all of you. The first thing is we're giving away throughout the next few months, including starting here at Campus Party, close to 1 million euros in prices for the best developers building applications there. Uh, so if you come later to the Fiverr um, uh, st uh, stand and to the developer zone, we will explain you how you can you know, get, get trained to develop for Fiverr platform and how can you get some of this money. And the second thing, uh, as Commissioner Cross uh, already mentioned, uh, through, uh, throughout 2014 and 2015, there's going to be 100 million euros, listen well, 100 million euros that will be distributed as investment into startups that want to build these new applications on top of this new ecosystem that Europe is creating. And why, why we think Europe is ready to, to do this? Well, I think that the, the main reason is that we're doing this in a different way than other companies are doing things. And there's two main things that are very different. One, as the name of the project indicates, this is a, pri a private-public partnership. This is about companies, private companies with commercial interests getting together with the public government and the European Union to try to foster this new ecosystem center in, uh, in Europe. And that's pretty unique. It's not about one large company dominating and doing uh, what they want and people adapting uh, to what they have. But it's a number of companies uh, collaborating together with the government to put this platform uh, for entrepreneurs. And the second thing that is very, very different is that this is all about being open. Uh, we don't want any proprietary systems. We don't want any close APIs. Uh, we want open source. Uh, we're going to use OpenStack. We're going to put all the stuff we're doing on the web with Firefox OS and other projects similarly together in this project. And all the APIs and everything will be completely open for anyone in Europe to, to participate. We don't want to create a closed ecosystem owned and controlled by one company. What we want is the European companies, together with the government, getting together and enabling uh, all entrepreneurs and developers. So hopefully this was enough to, to keep you excited about the project and excited about the future of Europe. I think that in spite of, you know, we've missed some of the technology waves, I think that, you know, there is enough talent and there is enough uh, people here. And this is uh, a manifestation of uh, how much talent is around Europe that can actually help Europe to regain the leadership it had in the past. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Domingo. Please let me now call to the stage Deborah Ripple. Deborah Ripple is the director of Up Europe, the organization behind Startup Weekend, Startup Digest, Next, and Startup America. Hi, everyone. Um, it's funny because when I was asked to speak about, about Fireware today, um, I thought, what am I going to say at the biggest technological events uh, in the world? and about a, a super exciting pan-European project um, about technology. I thought maybe I should talk about technology, right? <laughs> uh, indeed, the digital economy in Europe is growing at seven times the rate of the rest of the economy. Europe is at a turning point on the verge of capitalizing on the huge potential of the internet sector uh, to create jobs, to stimulate innovation, and accelerate the growth of the European economy. We all know it, right? Um, Europe has the potential to generate up to 1.5 billion extra jobs with that. The European Commission Digital Agenda initiative is accordingly designed um, to help European citizens and businesses get the most out of digital economies. We see it today. At Up Global, where, where um, I work, we pursue a complementary mission. We strive to build sustainable South Africa systems um, by empowering, supporting, and connecting entrepreneurs throughout the world and in my case, particularly in Europe. This is how I realized that I didn't really want to talk about technologies. What I really want to talk about is people. Communities, growing networks of people around Europe that are facilitating the continued growth of digital technologies, without whom Europe's digital economy would not flourish at all. Let me explain this phenomenon, for example, with, with a case that I know pretty well, which is Startup Weekends. Um, Startup Weekends, for those who don't know about it, it's an experimental um, education program central to Up Global's mission. And Startup Weekend events, for example, are famous for being tech-centric. About 95% of um, the ideas are mobile or web-focused. And given the 54-hour time frame, uh, even non-tech teams usually 
tend to uh, focus on tech-related um, ideas to, to present on a Sunday. Yet Startup Weekend, at its core, is a people-oriented organization. Our global growth is driven by extraordinary individuals, volunteers, organizers, and facilitators that devote an astonishing amount of time, energy, and passion to bring Startup Weekend events to their communities. And without those people, without the facilitators, the organizers, the mentors, the judges, and the attendees, Startup Weekend will not be promoting entrepreneurship around the world. And we have an example um, of this phenomenon right here at Campus Party in front of our eyes. Events like Campus Party are driven by people. Every person here, every Campus Zero, is a fundamental part of digital pan-European economy. I'm serious. <laughs> we wouldn't be here if it weren't for all of you, developers, gamers, entrepreneurs, hackers, or simply digitally uh, inclined humanoids. Because of all of you, we can grow this continental digital community. We can leverage our collective power to capitalize on the enormous potential for Europe to be even more disruptive. The power of communities, the ability to leverage that power to affect change, cannot be overestimated. The FIRE project that we're talking about today is a tremendously ambitious one, and its asset is going to be to be people like you and me, tweaking, testing, and improving it in order to turn those disruptive technologies into powerful tools. Because, in my opinion, only extraordinary communities have the ability to drive unprecedented change and make FIRE successful. We all simply need to realize that Fireware is a new opportunity to recognize what unifies us as Europeans and put greater emphasis on the common narrative that links everyone here today, which is innovation. Thanks, Deborah. Now, the last but not least important speaker. He's probably one of the youngest speakers in Campus Party. His name is Luis Ivan Quende, and he's a 17-year-old hacker and entrepreneur. He founded Asturix, a free operating system, when he was 12 and then got addicted to software and entrepreneurship. Luis won Hack Now, a contest that chooses the best hackers of Europe under 18, when, at 15 years old. He is now an advisor to the Vice President, um, Nelly Cross, um, and it's your turn now. Thanks. First of all, uh, let me thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here, accompanying in many stage to the uh, Commissioner Nelly Cruz, Carlos, and Deborah. It's a real pleasure. Back in 2010, I was attending Campus Party Europe then in Madrid, and I was waiting in the queue for lunch. And in front of me, there was a distinguished woman that seemed like an important politician or executive. Uh, what I was sure is that she was not a campusera. I didn't talk with her, as she seemed pretty inaccessible, and also she seemed not to know a bit about technology. Um, but last campus party in Europe, then in Berlin last year, uh, I figured out that she was uh, Nelly Cruz, the president of the European Commission. And I think my ideas were not so crazy because uh, she chose me to take part on her young advisors group, where she always listens what I have to say uh, with attention. And I hope that you will listen to me as well, despite my age. I have to say that after three years, um, I realized that she has a campusera in her soul. I'm Luis Van Quende, a 17 years old uh, hacker entrepreneur. I created my first uh, free software project at age 12, my first startup at age 15. I have been chosen as the best hacker of Europe under 18 years old. But since I was 12 and I got in this, uh, you know, very dynamic technology stand, I always had a question. Why the world's best startups are American? I think that technology is what drives the world nowadays. It's what, uh, you know, evolves faster every single day, and what creates the difference between the poor and the rich countries. So if the US or China dominate technology, they dominate the world, and they actually do. We have a lot of talent here in Europe. The web was first created here in the UK, and there are also really famous startups that are European, such as, for example, Spotify, SoundCloud, Southam, Robio, Badoo. 
But you think about famous American startups, the list could be really, really longer. Those who could give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety, said Benjamin Franklin, one of the founder fathers of the US. It seems like the US government has totally forgot what their founder fathers stood up for. I think they have gone just too far with prism. Commissioner, please do not let that happen in the European Union ever. The media shared with all of us that we could be spied. We know that since months, but we have done almost anything. We should be switching to providers that respect our privacy. I tried too, but figured out that the quality of that alternative services or applications is just so par. But that's a huge opportunity for European startups. So we can create that open and free services that will power the privacy respectful, not tracked, and free internet of the future. And also, there is a huge opportunity for European startups to become the next Google, Apple, or Facebook. But first of all, we need an open platform to power all that applications that will change the global landscape of, of, of startups. Amazon seems to have a monopoly on platform as a service, and they are doing very well. But the problem with Amazon is that they are American. So the NCA has all the data your app produces. Now that we have Fireware, developers just need to build on top of an open API, an open platform, with European providers that will respect their privacy. But Fireware is not an Amazon copy or an Amazon cloud, since it includes other features, for example, uh, APIs to work with big data, uh, context, sensors, for example, and standard APIs, so you are not restricted to one single provider anymore. We hackers don't care about age or location. We care about code. We care about building awesome stuff. We care about dreams and how we can make them become a reality. From the European Commission, we trust on you all, giving you the tools you, know, you need to build the future, to create something really new, and to change the world. But please, do it now. We only have one shot. We can't be late. The NCA could be spying every single one step you do. And Asia is it in the world. According to well-known predictions, in 2025, the 61% of the world's population will be ASEAN, while only the 6.5% will be European. And Asia will become the world's leader in research and development. 30% of Europe's population will be over 65 years old, and none of the European countries will be among the 10 most populated countries of the world. We must start innovating now that we can, or it may be too late. So uh, please, let me invite you to the workshops that are going to take place during this awesome campus party. Today at 4 p.m., we are going to get started with Fireware, so you can you know, start creating amazing applications and services. Tomorrow at 10 a.m., we'll learn how to host your applications uh, and connect them to our Raspberry Pi and sensors. And at 4 p.m., we will have a more uh, advanced workshops on uh, web user interfaces with Fireware. Um, there will be... Um, like 1 million euros in prices and challenges and hackathons. Yeah, that's a lot of money. So I, I mean, I think it's really cool to participate, and, and I really hope you are really into this technology and you will build awesome applications from here, from Europe. If you want to predict the future, just start building it. Thank you. Thanks, Lewis. Um, some really important uh, points there, and really, really interesting. Um, OK, so now we know uh, why Fireware is so important and why we have to promote it. So I wish Campus Sarah is joining the open innovation ecosystem that will be created around FireLab uh, that will bring innovative ideas to help Europe to overcome the crisis. Enjoy all the Fireware activities during this week. Thank you very much. And now we'll take some questions, please. <laughs> Just put, raise your hand if you have a question. Thanks. I have two questions. One, can we have some examples of the, some concrete examples of what uh, the generic enablers you're building? And two, is it 
open source only or is it also free software? I guess I'm the one to answer yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, So uh, the, the main building blocks is a, an open platform for cloud computing based on OpenStack, which is open source and, uh, and is, is open source. I don't know what, what you mean by free software, but it's basically open source, so you can use it for free. Um, uh, the second one there is uh, open APIs. Uh, so this basically we've standardized the APIs, but not necessarily a software. It's up to whoever builds the, the platform for things like integrating sensors, machine to machine, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And then there's a, a, an open source a big data platform as well. And those are kind of like the building blocks. There's more stuff around. Um, if you come at four o'clock, like uh, Luis uh, said, uh, we're going to be uh, myself with Luis, with uh, Juan Joyero, which is sitting there is the, the main architect of the of the platform. We'll explain you uh, everything. The, the main idea is that when you develop for the platform, you're not tied to one single provider. So this is a consortium of many, many large companies. Telefonica is leading, but there's other telcos like Telecom Italia uh, or Orange. We have companies like Ericsson, like uh, Technicolor, Nokia Siemens Networks, actually, so the, no the network part of Nokia, etc. And we all will all provide instances of the platform that you can then you know, take your code around any one of them. So you're not tied to work with Telefonica or with Orange or with anyone, which is the main difference with uh, the, the Amazon approach, let's say. And the second thing is that this will be hosted here um, in Europe. So all the privacy laws of Europe will apply to the data uh, that is there, which is also another very important thing. Thank you. Um, any more questions? Just raise your hand if you have. Oh. Back there? Hi, is the, um, the funding for Wired just for industry or is it for academic groups as well? So the, this, there's two sources of funding. One is the, the Future of Internet project, uh, which is funded by the European Union, and that goes both to academic institutions, so these universities, research labs, etc., etc., and for large corporations like Telefonica, it's co-funding. So basically, we receive some money, we have to match the funding, so we actually invest uh, in the platform as well. And then the next wave of funding, which is this uh, 1 million in prices for developers plus 100 million for startups, is open to anyone. So if you're from an academic institution and you want to go and develop uh, and go on one of the hackathons and try to win the prize, you can do it. If you're in a, uh, uh, the, the 100 million though is for creating companies. What we want is companies being created. And this is kind of like, let's say, early stage funding for these companies to be created. So it's not going to go to a university. But obviously, people from academic environment can you know, uh, become entrepreneurs and apply. Thank you. Uh, we have a question out in front. Uh, hello. Uh, we are organizing a hackathon in Istanbul for smart city. So is Fireware APIs uh, available for smart city apps? And uh, can we use Fireware APIs in hackathon in Istanbul? Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. answering all the questions, so apologies for that. <laughs> uh, yes, you can do it. Uh, if you come at 4 o'clock and see the hackathons we're organizing here, all the APIs and all the specifications are open. Um, you can take also the software work with us to set up an instance in Istanbul if you want to do it. And, uh, and certainly we'd love to collaborate with you to do that. Smart cities, as uh, Commissioner Cross says, uh, said in her speech, is one of the key uh, verticals that has been identified as one of the most promising for the future. Which actually, if you think about the European way of doing things, uh, is, it fits very well, right? Because it's about making people live better. It's about uh, you know, facilitating living in cities, which is becoming complicated uh, by using technology uh, to do so. So smart cities is one of the many verticals that have been identified as one of the verticals where the future internet will be developed and where this platform helps. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, there's a question over there. You've, you've all talked about the platform and the funding that's available. I'd be interested to hear from each of you of what, what you see as the biggest barrier to the startups and the companies forming and growing outside of the technology and the funding. What's, what are the biggest barriers, do you think? That, <clears throat> that it is not known to everybody that this is an opportunity without limits, so to say, 
and that um, we, we need everyone. So for me, it is communicating, um, just mentioning that uh, it is available. And number two, the big barrier is within my own organization, so to say. We have to get used to be more transparent, quicker, and rightly said by <coughs> my advisor, go on today and don't wait too long. And the bureaucracy is still at stake, and that is not blaming individuals, but that is a system that we should rock the boat for a time is not our friend. I would like to add one thing. I think that the, so what the European Union is doing is great. It's funding the project to build a platform and it's giving money to entrepreneurs to create the companies. And that's going to help to create, I don't know, dozens or hundreds of companies. But those companies need to become big companies and for that they need to generate revenue. So this is what we need is that everyone is conscious that large companies, uh, local governments, cities, etc., etc., they need to, to bet on this platform to provide to use those services to provide revenue for those companies, for those companies to grow. So one of the things we've been doing, for instance, in Spain, uh, together with the government, is telling the government, please, every time a city is, for instance, putting a pledge for creating a smart city platform, please put in the requirements that it has to use fireware, because then the city will spend the money funding the services that those companies will, uh, will mean, because investment only goes this far, and you can't live out of investment. You have to live out of revenue and profits. And that's, I think, will be the, the main barrier, that this ecosystem actually grows uh, in an organic way after the, the effort from the European Union of providing the initial money uh, happens. Would you, would you mind if I just add one issue, and that is own experience, so to say, and especially talking about the Smart Cities project. It is a project that is <coughs> uh, involving uh, three commissioners, uh, not too many, so to say. But I can assure you that it's not between those three individuals, but there are three organizations, um, directorate generals uh, involved in that. And how long it takes, and that was my biggest surprise, for this is close to people, and rightly said by you, it is um, proving that it is connected with everyone and everything, so to say. So it should be absolutely fascinating to have a couple of examples where you can prove here, this is the possibility. Are you interested in it, other cities, so to say? But it takes a long way to temporary. And uh, I always say, time again is not our friend, so we have to move on. And I sincerely hope that you will knock on our doors and keep uh, the speed in it. And if I may add to that, I would say that um, on what you know, of course was saying, I think what usually is lacking for people is inspiration and the fact that we're actually opening those technologies that you can look at them and get inspired into building things on top of it will be super helpful in the future. And so Bill and what Carlos was saying, I think after that, obviously you have to you know, think beyond the technology itself and think about turning it into an actual business. It's easy to create things that are you know, wonderful to see and it's um, you know, the, the all, all those things like on makers and connected objects are, are wonderful, but then you need to really go beyond that and actually find customers and, and create businesses with it and then grow them. That's probably what's going to be inspi inspiring, inspiring for other people to create their own businesses and build those technologies. The, the other thing I will advise to companies is think beyond your own country. Because I, you know, I see it in Spain. I'm a, an angel investor in more than 10 startups, and they always think about selling in Spain. Spain is a, is a small country. There's no scale only selling into one country, whether you're in Spain, in Germany, or UK. You have to think in the European level. Uh, and this is a great opportunity because it's European supported. Many countries are involved, uh, etc. So you have also the opportunity to get the scale that you need as a business to survive uh, after the funding. Great questions, uh, great answers, fantastic. Um, one more question we have at the front. <laughs> fantastic. Thank you, uh, Commissioner. We are, Eva, Carlos, and myself, we're thinking that it is hard for us to explain why we are here from Telefonica, why we are getting closest to the, uh, to the young generation and onto this technology, but it might be much harder for you to explain that you have a 17-year-old advisor. How do you explain that to your colleagues and that you have become a campusera? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was so pleased with his...
this line that age doesn't um, bother for this type of activities, and I couldn't agree more. And what I was mentioning yesterday, to make it even worse, or so to say, I have a five-year-old granddaughter. She is living in San Francisco, and she is a U.S. Dutch citizen, so to say. And we are Skyping uh, on Sunday, every Sunday. And uh, half a year ago, she was just asking me, Nene, for that is her name for me, Nene, what, by the way, is your age? And at that time, I had to say 71. And she looked at me and she said, and you are still alive? <laughs> and, and that, by the way, was just um, a wake-up call for me. And I explained to her that it doesn't bother that I'm still learning a lot and that uh, we need to involve everybody. And that is, by the way, one of my wake-up calls visiting the first, um, uh, the first uh, Madrid uh, campus party. And I told already earlier that was my best lesson I got in life. Can you imagine? And you know now my age. So <laughs> one of, uh, there were two guys and 14-year-olds, um, and they were just explaining to each other what their new invention would be. And I was listening to them, and at a certain moment, I couldn't keep my mouth, and I said to one of them, you are stupid, you are just giving information about your invention, he is your competitor. And he looked at me, I will never forget that face of the guy, he said, Madam, you are old-fashioned, for it is joining and sharing. And that is what is at stake, and that is, I think, the best element of the campus party, and therefore I'm such a believer in the campus party. But what I would advise you, for normally spoken, most of the governments of the member states of the European Union doesn't have the age of my advisor. They are a bit older, so to say. <laughs> And sometimes they are even not at the level of using a tablet. So can you imagine, and I will never forget, just being in this portfolio in office, and I got as a birthday present from my son the first iPad, and I came in my office and being proud, and I said to my assistant, look what I got, and just let's try it out. And she said, Nelly, no way there is no Wi-Fi connection here. I said, pardon me. <laughs> and I said, just organize it. The, and she came back after a day and she said, no way, it's not to be done. And I said, you are kidding. And I said, no, you have to, let's organize it. And it was a tremendous battle. So it was, of course, with someone who was uh, responsible for budget and so on, and he said, we can't do it for it is, if this is going on, we are faced with expenses that we can't afford. Well, talking about a couple of 10,000 euros. So I can assure you there are bigger spenders in the European Commission. But okay, not touching upon that. Then his alternative, where I said, I go, uh, I go into the publicity. Um, as, a, as a commissioner responsible for the digital agenda, I think that this is absolutely a must. And my people in my cabinet were, of course, looking at me and thought, well, is she fighting? For then we do have also opportunities. And at a certain moment, I got the bit, okay, but keep your mouth, only your, li your lane, your office, not the other side of uh, the level. And I said, no way. So. Long story, I, I, get your, uh, I get your point that I have to finish. It is not only talking about what is at stake for you. You are very smart, clever, and, and so on and so forth. You are our hope and glory. But don't forget the politicians that are at stake, for now they are starting to know what's in for them and what's in for their countries. But please, please, just push and, uh, and give your signature to the manifesto. For the manifesto should be common policy for every member state in Europe and of course for the Commission. And I will do my utmost. But please 
just back that initiative of a couple of great entrepreneur startups. Um, and sorry for taking so much time. Excellent. Thank you very much, Nelly. Inspiration to all of us. <laughs> Thank you very much, Luis, Carlos, Deborah, Nelly Cross. Thank you.